created in 1976 by the former head of the military regime, Muttala Mohammed, the federal capital territory is expected to meet up with the global standards of the developing world. Has this been achieved since its creation? Well, in pursuance of its commitment to the ban on commercial motorcycles within the nation's capital, Abuja, the Joint Tax Force team of the Federal Capital Territory Administration has seized and crushed over 1,000 motorcycles recently. And on issues this week, we will bring to the fore the menace of Okada riders and, of course, look at the general security architecture in the FCT. Welcome. The program is Issues. I am Ifoma Ojinta. I shall be right back. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Now, the marching order by the FCT minister, Nyesong Wike, to rid the city of shanties, Okada riders, drug peddlers, kidnappers, as well as on one town syndicate, is poised to rid the FCT of all these criminalities and ensure that the city centre or Abuja generally is safe for residents. And the FCT command and control centre is one unit that checkmates security challenges in the nation, as well as to ensure the safety of lives and property. And that is why on issues today, we are looking at, the, looking at enforcing the ban on commercial motorcycle operations and the general security architecture of the FCT. You get to meet our guest, who is from the FCT Command and Control Center. You meet him after this break. Just stay with us. Thank you very much for staying tuned and with me now in the studio to look at this very important um, issue, enforcing the ban on commercial motorcycle in the FCT and the general security architecture of Abuja is the Secretary Command and Control Center of the FCTA. He's also the member of FCT Joint Tax Force Team. And I have the pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Peter Olumiji. It's good to have you on issues today. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Okay. Now, when we talk about the menace of, of, of Okada riders, there seem to be a, a, so much. You know, tell us, you know, what, what, what is the Okada story or the, the commercial motorcycle story in the FCT? Yes, when, when we talk about the <clears throat> commercial motorcycle story in the FCT, popularly called uh, Okada, um, it's good for us to go back to history. How did they even evolve into the FCT transportation system? We know before 2006, the Okada uh, riders were a form of transportation within the FCC, that's the federal capital city. And there were a lot of issues on nuisances that deals with road crashes. Then many people fell victim of their recklessness on the highway. And so many people lost their legs, their limbs mm -hmm. to that. Whenever you go to the general hospital then in the FCT, you only see one or two patients in different wards, either the male ward, the female ward, even the children ward, that their legs are being hung, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with traction. Why? Because of crashes that is uh, tied to the recklessness of this commercial motorcyclist. Then on October 1st, 2006, the then uh, FCT minister, Malam Nasri El Rufai, made a pronouncement and banned the operation of Okada, the commercial motorcyclist, within the FCC. The FCC falls under the phase one of uh, the FCT, which has Wuse, Wuse 2, Gerike, Gerike 2, Maitama Central Business Area. And within this area, commercial motorcyclists are not meant to operate. Now, after that ban, there was a massive enforcement on them and they were reduced. But over the years, there have been gaps in that enforcement. 
And that's why you see them coming out now and not just being a traffic nuisance now, but they've become a source of security threats to the residents and those who commute using this means of uh, um, transportation system. Now, the new FCT minister, that's a barrister, Nelson Wiki, has come out right from the one to talk about their, the full enforcement of the ban on Okada commercial motorcycles, which is the Okada within the FCC. And it is part of what he talked about under his uh, short term policy statement. And he has also presented to the residents of the FCT, you know, new measures that will aid them in commuting from one point to the other. That means introducing the mass transportation system and even the rail system, which will soon be operational. Now, the, the, the Okada issue has become a source of concern to everyone residing in F City. It's either when you are driving your car, they bump into you and the next thing, they, became, they, they, they start to harass you. Or someone that bothered to a particular point and issue of change becomes a problem. problem. And before you know, they bring out dagger, you know, and stab the person who've had stories upon stories on that. So when you talk about the menace of Okada in the, FC, in the FCC, it's something that is not allowed, it's something that has been banned, mm -hmm. and it's something that we have to enforce. It is something that has been banned even before the uh, uh, new uh, administration, That's but true. yet we still see them around. Um, have you taken you know, enough stringent measures to keep them away? Yes, um, they know and they can attest to it, you know. Number one, before the ban in 2006, the leadership were called for consultative, consultative meetings mm -hmm. and they all agree on it. Even under this new dispensation, you know, the director of Directorate of Road Traffic Services, uh, Dr. Abdulatif Bello, you know, he's in charge of that. He has had a lot of meetings with their leader, the union leadership, mm -hmm. and he has reminded them that it's necessary for them to obey the rules and regulation based on this. Aside that, I've been part of so many consultative meetings with them, and we have gone around to all these areas where we have noticed they are operating illegally, because now they are operating illegally. Any Okada rider that comes within the FCC is operating illegally. Mm -hmm. We have gone around to meet them at the various spots and have spoken with them and have pleaded with them to ensure that they comply with uh, the order of the government. But unfortunately, even their leadership confessed to us that they have lost control on them. And if the leadership of the union can say that publicly, openly, that they've lost control of them, then you, 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 you can really understand the menace they started constituting within the system. Um, how do you check their activities in areas where they are allowed to ply? Because we have instances where people are on the bike and um, you are walking, somebody on the bike will just snatch your bag, take your phone, and you know. And in those pl uh, places, you know, you have very difficult terrain which only uh, motorcycles, you know, can maneuver, and you are you're not able to chase them. How how do security, you know, agencies checkmate the activities? of those who ply in areas where they are expected to ply. Yes, you know, you know this, um, the, the Okada riders, I can, I can categorize them into two sectors. The first sector are those who are registered with the union members of their union, mm -hmm. and they have their data. And the second uh, sector are the freelancers. Most of these people you see disobeying the law of the land are freelancers. And the the Commissioner of Police, FCT, have instructed and ordered all the divisional police uh, officers to ensure a clamp down on those who are not ready to do the right thing. Because once you are part of the, you are a registered member of the union, within those areas you are asked to, 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 to apply, that you are allowed to apply, they can checkmate whatever you do, even when you go far of the law, they can always fish you out. But now, what also the administration have also done is to have the buy-in of the union members within this area that are allowed so that they can now start identifying those who are freelancers. Because most of these 
nuisances and uh, uh, that are involved in all these criminal activities are majorly these freelancers. Okay. Now, a, a clamping down on, on um, the Okada um, riders, but that the illegal Okada um, commercial motorcycle operators, you have embarked on, you know, crushing of, of, of this motorcycle. How um, effective is this approach? Yes, the approach of crushing them is not something that was just uh, started. It, there's a reason why the administration had to go into crushing. Mm. Before now, when you apprehend them, you take them to the mobile court, the magistrate will find them 2,000, 3,000, and after that, you see them going quickly to pay the fine, and their Okada is released back to them. Mm. And before you know, they are back to the same spots in which they, are, where they were apprehended. So the administration over time thought of how, what other punitive measure can, can, can be used on them. Because again, the aspect of they are, are, are alleging that the, uh, the staffs of the directorate were involved in corrupt acts, mm -hmm. you know, releasing them came up. So the best way is that when these people are apprehended, when the Okadas are uh, confiscated, then the order of the court is being sought for it to be forfeited to the government and the crushing is done. Some people will always say that, oh, when you crush, then you are taking people out of their, uh, out of the, their daily lives, yes. you know, disposing them of their daily life and it's going to affect them. We said, no, people that don't even consider your own life, will you allow them to continue being a, 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 a menace within the system? Then also, some people do not understand that even after the crushing, these the parts are not just given out. They are being given out to recycle uh, companies okay. that take them and recycle them. And whenever they purchase them, they pay into the government coffer, you know. And when they go to recycle it, they now have they bring out pro, uh, products also that is beneficiary to the system. If you have refused to obey the law, then the law also we have to catch up with you. Okay. Now, aside, you know, these uh, commercial motorcycle, uh, um, motorcycle operators, you know, driving recklessly, we are still particular about the issue of security of those who patronize them. And so I want to ask, for the sake of those who live in um, the suburb where the, the motorcycle, commercial motorcycles are allowed to, to, to apply, are there any form of identification, identification so I will know who is genuine and who is uh, not a genuine uh, motorcycle, uh, registered right motorcycle up. operator? Yes. Like, like I said, like I made mention, they have unions in all these places. Let me take, uh, let me take Lube as a case study. You know, within Lube, you have the different parts, the um, Lube car wash, you have the Lube FHA, mm -hmm. you have the Lube police signboard, and the rest. Each of these locations that they are meant to operate, they have unions that have them registered. And the best people that can identify who is genuine and who is not genuine are the union leadership. And within them, they have a mini tax force team that also check those who are not part of them. And they've been giving credible intelligence to the security agencies within this, uh, this axis. Now, when... And I want to quickly talk about this also, that this Okada, um, the motto, commercial motorcyclists, have a, point, a, a stop point in these areas. They are not meant to bring the passenger to the main road. For example, at Lube, you have the screen wall. Mm -hmm. They are meant to stop at the screen wall. And the, and the passengers now can now walk down to where they will board the next available cab to wherever they are going to. But unfortunately, we also realize Unfortunately, even when the residents are complaining, some of these residents also contribute to what you see today. Because when the Okada riders wants to stop at the screen wall, it is these same uh, uh, commuters that will say, no, take me up to the main road. Mm. Automatically, you are complaining about a certain nuisance that they are being, uh, they are being committed. And you are also contributing to it. And that is why as much as possible, we also want to advise the residents. Allow these people to obey the law. 
They've always been telling us that whenever they want to obey the law, some of these residents also make them to disobey the law, even though that is not acceptable. Okay. I still want to find out, for an unsuspecting member of public, of the public, I want to board, I want to, you know, take an Okada now. Yes. How do I know that this Okada rider is genuine? Shouldn't they have a sticker or probably a uniform or a vest that will show that he's registered and if I, you know, take the Okada, I'll, I'll be assured of my safety? Yes, presently the Directorate of Road Traffic Services, under the leadership of the director, have told the union leadership that they must ensure that all their registered members, aside having a number, a number code on the Alcada, they should also have a reflective that bears the same number code. Because that is the only best form of identification for the residents to know who is genuine and who is not genuine. And we hope that the union leadership will be will hasten up on this. Because all what the minister wants is that anybody uh, commuting through any means of transportation to be able to commute from one location to the other safely. You know, from his speech that we, we, we have seen, the uh, security of the Federal Capital Territory is of uh, top priority to, to the minister. And he has given a marching order, you know, for, for the security agents and the uh, Joint Staff uh, team to get rid of uh, sit, uh, the city of shanties, uh, Okada riders, drug peddlers, you know, kidnappers. Uh, and all that. So how, how is, is this going on? Yes, um, you know, you know, the minister is someone that has seen it all. Where he was coming from, he has seen it all. And he wants to replicate such so that the FCT will be a safer place for everyone residing here. Um, as at last Friday, there was a new security operation that started called the uh, Operation Sweep. Okay. Operation Sweep has the relevant security agencies in it. And they have a mandate to ensure that they reduce cop crime within the FCT. They operate day and night. In fact, in the night time when you are asleep in the middle of the night, they are patrolling everywhere. And this operation will last as long as possible because he wants the FCT resident to be able to sleep with their two eyes closed. Mm -hmm. And this operation is headed by the uh, Commissioner of Police, FCT, CP, Gaba Aruna. You know, and we have all the relevant security. We have the DSS in it. We have the gas brigade. We have the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps. Mm -hmm. All having a joint operation that goes out in the daytime and also in the evening time and in the night time, throughout the night, throughout the night. And a lot of arrests have been made. A lot of recoveries too have been made, which I will, I will not be saying here. I know the when the time comes, the commissioner of police is going to give a press briefing on those achievements. Let's take a break now, sir. We are watching issues on NTH and 5 Abuja, and we are looking at the enforcement of ban of commercial motorcycle operators in certain areas of the territory. And of course, we're also looking at general security architecture of the FCT. Do stay. The conversation continues in a moment. Thank you very much for staying tuned and still with me in the studio is the Secretary Command and Control Center, FCTA, and also a member FCT Joint Task Force Team, Peter Olumuji. Now, we're talking about the Operation Sweep. Are there specific areas where the Operation Sweep is going to be looking at, or is it generally the city center and the area councils? Um, operation Sweep is a holistic security operation that looks at within the city center and it also covers the entire six area councils. And I will, I will not want to go too deep into their mode of operation, but it has been effective. And like I made mention of earlier on, mm. um, arrests of suspects have been made, recoveries have been made, both of vehicles and the rest which I know the FCT Commissioner of Police in his press briefing will be talking about that. Then also, we have people that have been volunteering information also to the government agencies, you know, because the issue of manhole vandal, vandalism mm -hmm. has been a source of concern. The issue of um, people going to vandalize street lights is also part of what they must look at, you know, mm -hmm. as part of their mandate. 
the aspect, the issue of kidnapping, reducing okay. kidnapping within the FCT, because we have pocket of uh, reported cases in one or two places. Mm -hmm. So this uh, team, this operation covers all the area councils. And like I said, it's both is a 24 hours uh, operation. It's not, it does not have a time frame. It's a 24 hours operation that have been going on and good uh, records have mm. been made. Okay. Uh, what was your take, you know, uh, about the uh, uh, demolition, uh, particularly of, of shanties in the city? A lot of people have been crying that they have no place to stay or they, their homes have, have been demolished and, and all that. I, I don't think uh, homes have been uh, demolished. I think what has been removed are shanties and slums. And I always use this, I always try to talk about it more and more in any way I have the opportunity. For example, someone that have decided to build his or her house on a road corridor or a floodplain, you don't expect government to close their eyes and allow it to be. If government does that, number one, the road that will benefit the entire um, residents will not be constructed. Then when flood comes during the rainy season, what happens? It affects even that individual. Like there's an operation we carry, we, we, we are on now from Kabusa Junction to up to Galadimawa roundabout, mm. clearing the shanties, the nuisances within that place. Do you know that on a daily basis, the FCT administration have been getting accolade on the good work that have been done there. Because the residents at times feel they don't have anywhere to go and complain. And they now see a government that is addressing those things that gives them pain. Mm. It's not things that affect the big men now. It's things that affect we the masses. And they are happy. Anytime we are out there working, People always say, oh, the government is trying, the FCT administration is trying. Mm. And that is what we are talking about. So you're talking about removal of, of shanties. What, what, um, as a member of the um, FCT Joint Tax Force team and the Secretary Command and Control Center of the FCTA, what are you going to do differently this time around in removal of shanties? Because what we have had over, over time in the FCT is when some places uh, or the shanties are removed in certain areas, before you know it, they spring up again. How do you ensure that they don't come back? That they don't come back to you know uh, and build these shanties in places that you have removed them. Yeah, yes, like what the government, what the administration is doing differently this time around is that each of those locations, before we go in there to carry out the removal, there have been a plan on what should be done within that locality, and that is what is going on right now. We remove, and government have a plan to take over the place. Is it that the construction is going just like what the new minister said? He has commissioned contractors to go back to site. So most of these road corridors that we remove and people come back now, they don't even have that luxury again mm. because the contractors are going back to site. As at uh, this week now, the government is uh, resurfacing most of the roads within the city center. So most of these places that are being removed, there's always, there's been a plan before we go in there now. And that is what the government, the new administration is doing different for what has been obtainable in time past. Okay. Yeah. Um, in carrying out your, your mandate, you know, or these operations, how far so far, any challenges? Yes, we have, uh, we face some challenges, you know, number one, challenges from the people. They are not happy when you are doing that, even though some of them know it is a necessary thing to be done, but uh, displacing someone that has been living in shanties that has all negative things health-wise, you know, mm -hmm. they are still not happy, but at the long run, they are always uh, applauding the administration. We also have challenges of uh, the team being attacked at times, mm -hmm. you know, some of the personnel being attacked, but we've been able to ensure that uh, in, in a subtle way, anyone that is involved in such attack is arrested and prosecuted. You know, I think those are the major challenges, you know. <laughs> okay, now you, 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 you have this uh, platform, you know, to, to, to talk to residents of the FCT as you go about your mandate, which you must carry out. So what advice do you have for residents of the FCT? Yes, my advice for residents of FCT is that, number one, you should know that there's a new sheriff in town, and this new sheriff has you in mind, have you in mind, 
The new sheriff wants everybody to bring, both the poor and the rich. And from the policy statement of the new sheriff, you can see that those policy statements is going to impact on the general masses the more. You that thought you don't have a voice, we now have a voice. And whatever you see being done now, they want you to be able to commute from one location to the other without any fear of threats to your life and property. And also want to advise you that when you see something, ensure you report to the nearest law enforcement agent or office so that something can be done immediately. Thank you so very much. I wish we had time you know, to carry on with this conversation, but we don't. Thank you so very much um, indeed, Secretary Command and Control F Center FCTA and member FCC Joint Task Force Team, Peter Olumuji. It's been a pleasure having you on issues. Thank you very much. Well, that's the outlook of the program this week. Let's do this again same time next week. Till then, I remain Ifo Ojinta. And bye for now. Mm -hmm.